Have you ever wondered, can you communicate directly with spirit guides, teachers, or non-physical consciousness, or even our higher selves? What would they tell us? My name is Kevin Moore, and since 2015, I started to practice a form of communication which is termed channeling. I have been interviewing experts on my talk show to find out, does life continue after we die? And can we communicate with those that have crossed over? With each expert I spoke to, they all had different ideas. Is there knowledge from the past which could be shared with the present moment? So I thought, why not just speak to the non-physical world directly through channelers around the world? And that's what I set out to do. They call us channelers will take the viewers on a journey into the phenomena known as channeling. And my main goal with this docu-series is to bring a new understanding and awareness to channeling by looking within ourselves and asking, is it truly possible that we can all use this innate ability? So we're just going to have a bit of a chit chat here as well. I mean, you was only just recently on and um, we're going to talk about uh, the channeling course that you're offering, uh, which is uh, something that you've been ongoing, which I, you was only on not too long ago. And I did say that we were going to support. Yeah, it starts February 6th. So by the time this comes out, you'll probably have less than two weeks to decide whether you want to be in it. But it runs for months and months and months. So even if you are watching this in March, you could always sign up for it and I'd send you the recordings of the February class. So when is the next one after February then? The next one will be? So it goes at once a month, approximately 30 days. Sometimes it's a little more, sometimes it's a little less, depending on whether when, if I have a vacation in there somewhere. So um, yeah, but it gives everyone a chance in the course to come together in a private Facebook group that I form for it and work out times to channel with each other, to practice with each other, and also just to practice on your own because especially in the first three classes, there's a lot of stuff that is meant to get you to start channeling. You know, it's it's designed to get the ball rolling, to get the momentum and the, the energy flowing. And now you've listed dates on your website, I think, of when these courses start. Um, when it, the, yes. Yeah. It okay. starts on February 6th, but then all the dates, like the March date, the April, the May, all that's on there. And the website is? It's danielscranton.com slash mega, M-E-G-A. And that'll take you right to it. So you won't have to do any navigating of my website. There's a lot of stuff on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of stuff on there. Yeah, you do. You do do a, a, a lot of different stuff. Um, and you do the one to one sessions as well. And if people I mean, we may we may have some channeling here. Um, I'll make sure there's links below if people want to see you channel. But uh, I just see myself if I'm going to be working with channels in the future with what I'm doing. I, it's, a, it's a very different content to, to, to this. Do you know what I mean? Or to even interviewing channels anymore. Um, I, I want to do more. Um, I want to do but I think I use the word. I think, <laughs> I think I want to do, you know, something where it's uh, more in the news, in the news kind of stuff. Whether it's, um, yeah. um, and even if, even if it's, I may be using the words news, but it may, it, you know, it it may be, it may even look different to that. Well, what conventional newsy stuff right. would look like, you know, right. Um, I was just saying this to you before we started recording. That I, there's a lot of good stuff that there's some great teaching information that comes from different um, for, for, from just even channeling, channeling yourself, and you know um, from channels that I've interviewed. And um, it's using some of that teaching information or, or some some of that that knowledge, you know, and, and applying it to sort of you know regular 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 stuff that we're all going through. <laughs> yeah. You know? Uh, fear, love, hate, uh, you know, um, I was saying the words, you know, 
law of attraction, but you know, creating your re- own reality and 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 you know, even even you know, just with all the things that are going on out there right now, uh, there's so much that, that you could apply to stuff that I've that I've heard, you know heard from different people. Um, just even to ask the basic question. I mean, I mean, I think everything that anyone goes through um, in their life, any any sort of tragedy someone's going through right now publicly as well if we're talking about the news there's so much that one is learning from that experience and uh, it's probably teaching so many others just no matter what someone's gone through that's quite difficult most people can look back and and say don't they that oh my god that was such a an amazing you know learning experience that i went through even though at the time i'd lost my faith in god whatever you know whatever experience they went through right um over the lifetime you know it's it it, it, it took me to, to places that that um i i just you know needed to experience it on a on a deeper level and i think it takes time for some people to say those those things to themselves whether they'll admit it publicly or or even just um, to family, but I think um, with those bigger, any big events or any whatever people are going through, I think most channels have talked to me about the deeper reasons collectively and 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 singly of why those things are happening as well. If I'm making sense, yeah, and I think also one of the things that will happen when you apply knowledge that you receive from a channeled entity or channeled collective is that you can look at a situation from a new perspective. You get a fresh perspective on an old argument. For example, in the U.S. here, what do we have more than any other country? Mass shootings. We have people going into schools, McDonald's, wherever they're going, and they've got an automatic weapon and a lot of people die and a lot of people are hurt. And so what happens with the 24-hour news cycle after that? The debate begins. Should there be stricter gun laws? Should we have a longer wait for guns? Should there be a limit to what kind of guns you could have? And all that stuff, how many, all of it. And what the channel beings come in and say, from my experience, because I've channeled after these things have happened, is you can fight about guns if that, you know, if that's what you want to do. But what we really need right now is compassion for everyone involved in this, every child that was at that school who survived all the families of the people who died the family of the shooter you know the the shooter if the shooter's still alive they need compassion too obviously they wouldn't have gone in and shot up that place if they were doing well in life you know if they had been treated with love and kindness everywhere they went so there's a need for more compassion more than there's a need for another debate about guns and the NRA digging in their heels and all the things that happen after. And then people's claiming it didn't even really happen. You know, if you're pro gun now, you'll you'll get on your YouTube channel or your Alex Jones program or whatever and say, oh, no, that was all that didn't really happen. And he did that and he got sued and he lost and. <laughs> You know, and they're, you know, making him cough up a billion dollars now because um, so there's more to there's more to this than we typically get, even if you're listening to a conspiracy theorist who you think might have a, a more interesting point of view than CNN and Fox. It's still the the perspective has to be higher than, well, did it even really happen? You know, there has to be a higher perspective. And I think that's what we get when we get channeled information coming in on something like this. Yes. And the lessons that are involved for everyone that uh, goes through those um, experiences. I mean, even just uh, a couple of hours ago uh, or, or more, I mean, not that long ago, today there was a mass shooting with, with 10 people in California. 
um, in, a, in a ballroom um, um, mass shooting. Um, and just think of all the lives that have changed just there, right? Yeah. But I wonder on a deeper spiritual level uh, that uh, what's, what's going to come from those changes. Um, and I think if you speak to anyone over time that has gone through the grieving process that has worked on themselves uh whatever you know people do to to heal from that kind of event that uh, they go on to do some amazing things right mm -hmm. and it's just like you know why does this why, why do we have to go through such difficult experiences to become the soul that we, we we become from you know the the ramification of of that that collective experience or that you know that or that reality so um it is true what you're saying that a lot of the channel material that i've uh, been subjected to it does come to the more the, you know fear is a big thing for people you know the more fear that you claim the more that it becomes into your reality there's something most definitely true about that i'm probably not saying it the, the, the best way you know the, the the lessons of karma involved in such events as well um that there is definitely uh, the opportunity for change from events like that i mean the, some of these people that have gone through very difficult situations, they've also it was the only way for some of the people around that 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 uh, person or whatever the, the tragedy was for them to change. They they, they weren't going to change any other way. Right, right. And you know, there's so much going on right now, isn't there, in the world, in the sense of of change. And um, maybe it's not going to be. You know, we, there's a talk, isn't there, of the times ahead of us that it is um, not going to be a, um, a an easy transition, in a sense. I mean, we we want it to be that to have change to to become something to 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 move away from these th issues that that are just historically repeating all the time, right? In so many ways, it's got to be a spiritual shift, but that's not going to happen for generations to come, probably. So, what I'm saying is. Yes, we, uh, we have. There's there. You know, there, there's a lot that we have to go through to get to where we we'd all like to be, but uh, we still got to go through the stuff. And uh, there's joy in all the lessons as well. Yeah, I think that's. It almost sounds like I'm like I'm saying, oh my god, what a terrible place. Why are we all here? Do you know what I mean? But there is. Um, I think as well, you you know, you can create the reality you want. And some people will say probably that they've created realities where they've not really had that in their, you know, in their experience too much. Collectively, it's there. Yeah, and we're all connected. So anything that affects any person in any part of the world is affecting you, whether you want to acknowledge it or not. And I think that one of the things you and I were talking about before we we hit the record button was maybe some of the misapplication too of uh, channeled material, things that you you get on a spiritual path with, and you think I've got it all figured out. Um, you know, and usually it is a person who thinks in terms of law of attraction, and I only and I should only focus on the good, and I should never put my attention on anything negative, including my own emotions. And that person is going to have an issue at some point in their life, no matter how hard they try to ignore anything that is negative, anything that doesn't feel good. And so if, if you started talking about the shooting in California to that person, they might walk away because they just don't, they don't even think that it serves them at all to have that in their awareness. And so there's, there's a bit of denial that can go on for especially the newly awakened who get a hold of some channel material and it resonates so much and they think, oh my gosh, now I have it all figured out. I know exactly what to do. I know exactly what not to do. I know what to think and what not to think. But then reality sort of sets in at some point and you realize like, oh, that all was up here and I wasn't allowing myself to go in here and actually feel my own emotions, 
which is so important to do. And I actually went in the opposite direction myself personally for a while where I was so convinced that it was all about what's going on in here, what I'm feeling, when I'm vibrating, that I got really careless with my thinking. And it's really only been recently that I've been paying much more attention to what I think about everything and everyone and wanting to be really pure in my thought. Um, in addition to paying attention to my vibration, my emotions, these other things that I thought at some point were so much more important that I could even not consider what my thoughts are. Yeah, that's uh, that's so true. And I think what I was trying to say earlier on as well was it's just not it's not going to be like a swan boat ride, you know, this lifetime or, or probably lifetimes ahead as well for many people. I think um, change can be very difficult. But you still can, um, but change is the only thing that's going to grow you <laughs> and you still can become uh, and do some of the things that, you know, that you're really pulled to do as well in that. And uh, those things do have a, a, an amazing effect on others, you know, to, to help people as well, um, no matter, you know, I suppose as long as you're living your, your truth as well. Um, yeah, I think what you make a good point there is that um, we all have the ability to connect don't we to that greater part of ourselves the soul the 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 higher self um and i think i said this in the previous interview as well uh, along the lines that uh, you know but not all, all of us think we are able to or um I, 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 well you know it's i suppose some some of that stuff is not the prettiest to look at is it sometimes like maybe we want to give our power to someone else and we don't want to um you know see that we you know we do have that ability to to tune in um but then there's so many forms of channeling isn't there what is a lighter form of channeling would you say that everyone's able to do um to be in the shower or in the bathtub and get an insight and be like um oh gosh i i made this reference in another interview recently and i got it wrong but it's there is a Greek guy in who's famously was in a bathtub when he said Eureka. Um, and and I see that like I talk to people all the time about channeling because I'm always teaching channeling one on one and in groups and stuff. And it's it's a common thing that water is this element that really helps us to tune in. And there are several reasons why that is we. Obviously, when we're showering or bathing, there's a relaxing that's going on. There's there's a taking time away from the real world and going off by myself and doing this thing that is pure, purely self-care. And you cleanse your energy field. You insulate yourself from thought forms. Water is a conductor of energy and electricity. So you're more likely then to open up and receive and receive an insight and hopefully when you get out of the tub or the shower and you go and you uh, live your life, you'll apply what you got in that moment. You'll actually follow through with it. And then you'll show yourself, oh, I can actually trust what I get. I don't have to just go and tune into this other channel or and see what they're saying about what I should be doing. <laughs> That's so important, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Um it can be easy to get lost, though, can't it, in the mind noise of um, not being too sure where um, where everything's going sometimes, right? Um, but I think there's something about just just knowing that, uh, well, fear isn't going to help, is it? Fear is never going to help. Fear is not the answer. And... Um, right. I suppose sometimes trying to, uh, uh, you know, look at the view from a different perspective, from a higher perspective. Uh, that's that's what we're trying to to do. Um, yeah. You know, sometimes we can look at things from a lower perspective, can't we? But if we were, had the ability to just go up to the fiftieth floor, we would see everything so differently, wouldn't we? Yeah. Um. 
and and maybe that's you know part of the process, isn't it? Is is to try to see ourselves, you know, in that best version of ourselves. What 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 is that pinnacle version that we can see ourselves doing, and um, and believing yeah. that 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 we that we can that we're worthy and that we can do that. Yeah, and it's funny when you mentioned fear. What what I immediately thought of was back to my example of one of us getting having that eureka moment of getting something. The little light bulb goes on above our head, and we we feel like we have this insight. And sometimes it's undeniable, and you're just like, "Oh my God, that's the answer," and and there's no questioning it, and you'll move forward with it. But then other times, when the second guessing comes in. There is a tendency, I think, especially with newer people, people who are newer to receiving in any sort of way other than information they got from another person or from the internet or a book, you know, it's to question it and to fear whether I'm right or not. Like if I if I apply this or if I go and I tell this person this and I turn out to be wrong, then that will be too soul crushing for of a defeat for me. So I'm just going to keep it to myself or I'm not going to act on it. I'm not going to take that leap of faith because I can't deal with the possibility of being wrong. Yeah. And then I suppose as well, you know, what areas of our life are informed by fear as well. When we look yes. at that, that side, you know, yeah. you know when yeah, we're making we decisions. Yeah. Yeah. We can, taught to to doubt ourselves from a young age depending on you know where we went to school who our parents were all that stuff yeah mm. and and it's sort of breaking those old patterns isn't it to um um yeah to be looking at things from a different perspective a more positive perspective as well and not not the history of 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 the life that you've been living to get to this point of what you think historically is the you know the right thing or the wrong thing in, in, in a way. Um, just breaking patterns as well uh, is, is very difficult. Um, but that but this all can be done by thyself in a sense, can't it? I mean, uh, th- th- and this is what you're teaching is that we all have that power to go, to go within. But um, yeah, I mean, in that month of teaching then the channeling course, I mean, w- what are some of the, change that you see people go through the transformations yeah it's actually a period of like eight months from it's nine classes you know so it spans eight months um and what i've seen a lot of a lot of people come at different levels to the course you know some people are already channeling some people haven't channeled at all what i see sometimes are people chant you know who for whatever reason, they must have been just waiting for something like this to come along for them to sign up for it because they they're obviously ready to do it when they come to me because I don't I don't have any magic wands or anything that I'm waving over the class. But some people will really just start channeling within a few of the classes and channeling verbally. You were saying earlier, there's many different kinds of channeling, and that's true. And the way that I do it is just one way. And the way that um, people who channel their do writing, that's another way. And hear a voice in their head, that's another way. Um, so they, there are people who go from zero to 60 really fast with it. And like I said, they must be, they must be ready because um, I'm really good at teaching channeling, but I'm not that good. that <laughs> I can just take someone who uh, is, you know, light years from being able to do it and have them do it in a couple of classes, but I'll give everybody all the tools and all the tricks and all the tips and the techniques and, and the things that I know to be true about channeling. And then, you know, once you teach a person to fish, it's up to them, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, And that's true of of all of us, you know, we have to apply what we learn. We have to practice it, put it into practice or else, you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't change anything just to know something. It has to be, you know, applying it to life. And that's the, that's the tricky part of life. You know, it's like, even if you were, 
a devout Christian and you dedicated yourself to knowing every passage in the Bible, you would still have to then apply all of that to the tricky situations that life brings us. And it brings us these tricky situations that are not cut and dried, where you go, oh my gosh, I thought I was prepared for everything in life, but I don't know how to deal with this. And so what do you do? You just, you have to go back to the drawing board. You have to start and say, okay, well, maybe there is some different way of looking at this. Maybe I can get some something from a, a channeled entity or a reading or something that will help me see this differently and approach it differently. Mm, mm, that's right. And, um, it, you know, it's not a magic formula to, um, well, yeah, to, to all of a sudden being happy all day in a sense. Um, right. Right. <laughs> yeah, because I don't think there's no such a thing, right? But um, it it is a way of tapping back into the trueness of who you are, which yeah. I don't, at, at, a, at a trueness, at a soul level, there is no fear. Um, right. th there is only... Um, we probably operate from a, only a sort of a, a, a love-based kind of energy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the, yeah, it's when we, when we can tap into that to that 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 trueness of who we really are. Do you think the channeling allows people to do that? Learning to channel allows people to do that. The way that I teach it is, I always teach people to raise their vibration. That that that's the key to getting there. And raising your vibration is something that's a little bit different for everyone, but there has to be a resonance with that innermost self that is love that you were just talking about, that we are all love, that there, the soul was created by God, but still is God. It, it's not separate from God. It's just a chunk of God. And what is God but love? What is source? The, the best definition we could come up with for source is source is everything and source is love. So that love is inside of each of us. And when we go there, when we get out of here and we go here and we we activate it. We and, and sometimes it happens because we see a kitten or we see a sunset or we meet the love of our lives or whatever it is, and that activates it. But what we're learning to do now as conscious, you know, uh, awake, aware people is how to go within and get into that state, even though there's no kitten, there's no loved one, there's no sunset, there's nothing to spark it for us. But we, once we know it's there, we should know that it's always there. It's always available. And we have to train ourselves to go in there and activate it and get ourselves in that vibration so that then our consciousness, which may usually vibrate around here from the day-to-day -day things we're doing. So then we're elevating it to say here. And then the beings that are up here, they can connect with us because we're close enough to them. It's not... There's not that huge gap where we're when there's that huge gap where we're like praying, you know, up and saying, come on, help me, help me. And not realizing that part of it is really on us to help ourselves to go to that next higher level. Yeah. And uh, that we don't have to. It doesn't always have to be so difficult, does it? For some, you know, life for some of us. Um mm. It is about breaking those habits and those patterns, you know, like, let's say you're a person who really just reaches for their phone first thing when they wake up, that's that you wake up, you just reach for that phone, you've got to check Instagram, you've got to check email, Facebook, all that. Well, it takes a little bit of discipline and willpower to say, when I wake up, I know the best thing I can do is meditate, fill my body with my soul, make sure my soul's completely in their ground, in other words, and activate a, a higher frequency vibration within my body. So I'm starting my day off on the right foot and I'm ready for anything. And I know that I can go back to this place throughout my day when something happens and reach within for what I was activating and cultivating first thing in the morning before I started on the hamster wheel of my thoughts in my head. There's so much I've learned 
in some ways uh, from people like yourself. And uh, don't we don't always apply it though, do we? Don't always apply it when it comes to the more more challenging times in life. But I think eventually it does circle back round. I think eventually it does um, um, show its face. Uh, yeah, because I mean, there's only so far you can sort of to those lower levels that you you can want to go to where you know and eventually you, you, you're like well there must be another way oh, oh hang on a minute i remember what that said or this said or yeah yeah um and sometimes you know you, it's probably more powerful to, to for it to come from yourself isn't it it probably is yeah probably is mm-hmm. to be empowered only- yourself mm. yeah well uh, one of my teachers um is a channeler named wendy kennedy And um, I think it may have been her, it may have been the Pleiadians she channels that said, look, you go to someone else and you get their channeling. Well, then the the channeled energy went through them, which means it went through their filter and then their filter gave it to you. And then it went through your filter. And so that now there's two filters before it you're getting it Um, and and doing with it, whatever you're going to do. So if you get it directly, there's only one filter involved and that's better than two filters. <laughs> you know, absolutely. It and is. If you're getting it from anything less than God, then even if it's a ninth dimensional collective, they're still, they still are operating with filters because they're not at the source energy level. They're not at that dimensional plane yet. So then I think you could you could say that that's an, another filter as well because if you listen to different channeled entities, they're obviously coming to us from slightly different perspectives, and that's needed because we're all different. And it's also good to just have different perspectives that you can draw from. So if you like Cryon, Abraham, and Bashar then you take a little bit from each one and a little bit from Eckhart Tolle and a little bit from Muji and a little bit from Deepak. And you, and you feel like I, I, I took all the best from all of those teachers and I'm putting that together to have a, you know, life, you know, approach, an approach to life. You said earlier on as well, that uh, there were some other ways uh, that, people channel as well and you mentioned one or two but there was there were more ways exactly yeah um a lot of people will come to me and say well i think i tap into something like i go into the channeling state when i'm coaching someone or just helping someone like a family member or friend who comes to them for help and they'll say and i start talking and at first it's me but then at some point i feel like i'm just they're giving the information. I don't know where it's coming from. It feels like it's coming from a higher source or coming through me. And, you know, even my 78 year old father said that to me the last time I was visiting with him and I was trying to explain to him what it is that I do exactly. Um, So people get it like a lot more people get channeling than you might think, because when, if I say to someone and I, I still run into this to this day because not everybody who I meet knows who I am and what I do. And I, if I say to them, I'm a channeler, then, you know, the, there's going to be a follow-up question, <laughs> you know, they're, they're not going to, it's not like saying I'm a, I'm a welder, you know? Um, so you have to explain it to people, even though there is this idea that everybody has, like another good example of it is um, we all know from our own experience and from watching other people, what it looks like when you're dancing with no self-consciousness whatsoever, your body is moving to the music because the music is inspiring you to move and you go beyond your head and you're not thinking about, well, should I be doing this or should I be doing this? Or, you know, (laughs) it's just happening. And then the the difference between that and then a very self-conscious person going out and doing a dance 
for someone or a crowd or, you know, they're on the dance floor at a nightclub, but they're, they're not really, you know, they're not really sure what they should be doing, or they just think they should be out there. And it's totally a different experience. And that was probably my earliest experience with channeling because I did have that ability to completely let go and let my body be moved and for hours at a time. And, um, and I loved it and I still love dancing. But then from there, you know, I moved to L.A. to become a famous Hollywood screenwriter, which obviously didn't pan out. And uh, I was I was really in the flow writing those screenplays like it was obvious to me that I I had some sort of gift for seeing the film in my in my mind's eye and putting it down onto the page and giving the characters the right dialogue, the right things to say. And a lot of times I'd write comedy and it would come out really funny. And I know that because I, they'd be read in front of people and they'd be laughing. So there, there is like, uh, there is that thing that you do and sports is another time. Maybe everyone's had that experience and maybe some people have never had that experience, but it, they call it being in the zone. It's like, you don't have to think you're so comfortable and confident out there doing what you do that it just everything goes in or, you know, goes where it's supposed to go or you hit the ball or whatever. <laughs> mm. Yep. That's so true. That's so true. Um, and, it, and it's giving yourself the permission to do that as well, isn't it? It's saying that, you know, I just don't care anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's when, it's when you don't care. It's when it's, it's when you care or, or to put it another way, it's when you care more about the joy of doing it than whether it's good or not, whether anyone's going to like it or not, or how, you know, cause you can also be in that situation where you're, you're moving and you feel like, Oh, the, the music is moving me. And then you start to think about it. And in that moment, you start to think about it. It's like you, you're trying to orchestrate it and you realize I'm not, I'm out of the flow now. I think we maybe have all experienced that too, where mm -hmm. we take ourselves out of the flow and, um, and it's always that mental, like, Oh, I should be involved. Like I, I need to control this. And, and channeling is really about letting go, surrendering, letting it happen through you. Yeah. Yeah. And you've been doing this now for how many years? Uh, over 12, 12 years. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so uh, it's pretty easy for you to sort of go into the sort of um, connect with, uh, well, actually, what is it you connect with right now? What is it you're connecting with? I should ask you that. Most of the time I channel the Arcturian Council, which is a non-physical collective from, yeah, from the, the star system Arcturus. Um, it's in the Buotes constellation, if that's any help to people. But there's this red giant out there called Arcturus. And uh, uh, once I had been channeling them for a while, I was watching a movie called Passengers and the and the the spaceship goes by Arcturus. And I and without without any like they didn't say we're about to pass Arcturus. It's just like, oh, there's Arcturus. And I saw it and I started crying. So there's there's obviously a connection there that that was pointing me in that direction to channel them. Cause I had already been channeling at that time for about six years. And then I just decided I want to channel Arcturians and I did. And, and it stuck with them um, for the daily messages for over six years now, because I feel like there's a resonance for people. And also there seems to be kind of um, a gradual building of their message to include more and to be more uh, topical and specific to what's happening in the world. So I just felt like oh, I'll stick with them now. So just, you know, going to the, the course that you teach as well, is there a sort of timing that's involved when people um, come to you for, for, you know, to start their channeling in a sense, whether they go on to do more with that publicly or whether it's just you know very very much a, a private internal thing do you think there's a sort of timing it that's involved for people oh i definitely do and the reason i think that is because you know i look at my own life and it was 
I was 38 before I started channeling, which is, I, I, I think of myself as a late bloomer. I recently found out Lee Carroll started at 40, 43. So he's got me beat there. But um, yeah, it's, um, I had been meditating every day for over 10 years. So I had been, and I had been following channelers of one kind or another for about mm, eight years. And, you know, so getting attunements from all those channeled uh, workshops and, and recordings that I, and books that I was absorbing. So there's, um, there's something that builds us to it. And I think I've also seen people who wanted to channel maybe five years ago and weren't able to, and then stuck with it. And then it took them years, but they were eventually able to do it. So it's going to be different for everybody when that point is, when they can actually break through that barrier and do it. But I will say that I feel like all the time spent getting from that moment where you first say, I'd like to do this to when it actually happens. That's not wasted time. That's not time where, you know, oh, I just was grinding away and nothing was happening. There were things happening. And a lot of times people sort of discount or ignore those moments of getting closer. And, and it's a, it's a warm sensation in the body or in an ear or something, or it's a tingle or it's a twitch um, it's something even you might just be start making faces or, you know, sounds or um, and and you don't think there and you're still going, well, I'm not channeling yet. Or you're speaking light language or you're channeling tones. These are all these are all the ways that you're opening up to it. And it's a gradual process. And it took it didn't take me as long as I think it's taken other people. But. I was still impatient with it, even though it only took. So I understand the impatience with actually being able to speak for it. But I also know, looking back at it, that I was being readied for it. And it was a process. And I could have enjoyed the process more. <laughs> yeah, I think so many of us could look back at that, can't we? And and we will. Some of, we, we do, as you did there. We all do that, don't we? We all look back and like, why was I so hard? Why did I make it so hard? Yeah. You know, why was I wasn't enjoying that more. That was, that could have been fun. <laughs> but you don't know what you don't know at the time, I suppose, do you? I am, you know. Yeah, um, you don't. You're, um, you're only in that moment. Yeah. And, and uh, we, we, you know, none of us, none of us um, are born, are we, with any memory of anything before this? Yeah, which is how it has to be. Otherwise, it wouldn't be this. Yeah, it, it, we wouldn't be having this experience if we if we could remember all. Of I it. know, I know. And then some of us, a lot of us, say, "Well, I think I'd rather remember <laughs> than not." Right, <laughs> uh, but um, that's just not not the thing, is it? Um, now, with your course as well, you do well. Actually, why do you do nine? Why is there nine sort of segments in this? Because um, that's a lot, isn't it? Well. It's funny because originally I think it was going to be eight and then I made it nine for some reason. And it was all intuitive. Like the, the, the coming up with the whole thing was just an intuitive sense of this is what it needs to be. But then once I started doing it, I realized, okay, so here's how it breaks down into nine classes. The first class is like a general channeling class. And then the second one's on toning and how toning helps you to, uh, open up your throat chakra and get into the channeling state. And then the third one's on light language, because light language is something you're probably seeing a lot more of everywhere now, because a lot more people are finding they can do it. So that's a stepping stone. And then channel your higher self and then channel your guide. So now we're up to five classes. Then channel archangels, channel ascended masters, channel fairies and all beings in the fairy realm, like mermaids, unicorns. And then finally channel ETs. So the nine classes, I honestly don't know what the 10th class would be. Um, it, it seems like it just works out perfectly for me. And I don't, 
teach off of any notes or I don't, I don't look at anything. It just all comes from me in that moment, because as you know, this is our third conversation. Um, and I can talk about these topics. Like I have no shortage of things to say <laughs> about channeling. <laughs> I spent eight years totally immersed in it. And now I've been channeling for 12. So that means 20 years. <laughs> mm, mm, that's a lot, isn't it? Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. But you as a, well, yeah, you, I think you read a lot of books on channeling, you would say. Yeah. Not on how to do it, but um, <laughs> that was all me having to just navigate in the dark when i say books on channeling i mean there's lots of people that have put their material out there is what i'm saying did you yeah actually, yeah yeah abraham, yeah, abraham books, and uh, yeah Seth books and yeah I read Seth them. books yeah yeah conversations with god those were all channeled i remember going to the law of one um yeah research center and uh they had um Oh my God, they had hundreds of books on channeling. They, they was just, I've never seen so many books on the subject. They oh. had a lot. Uh, their, their library was just, well, same with the Edgar Casey Center. I mean, that had um, a ton of books, you know, out of print stuff, just stuff that, um, I just, God knows where they sourced it from. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, they had a, yeah, it was very interesting to, to see all those books on, on that subject. So, um, and it's really, I've always said this, it's just not really been a, a major subject, has it, in, in the, as big as it is as it is now, that, you know, there's so many more shows covering the subject of channeling yeah. and channelers. Yeah. There's so many more out there. I didn't, in 2010, I didn't know of very many people who were doing it, so I, I didn't know who to turn to for help, and uh, now you could probably find a channeling course pretty easily. <laughs> And a channeler, <laughs> yeah. And a channeler, a channel yeah, for you, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although no. the really big ones, when they when they get really big, they stop working with people one on one. It seems, and I understand that. Having done it for twelve years, I understand why you can reach that that point where you're like, okay, I did that. Now let me just write books and do uh, workshops with hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. Where do you see yourself going with the work? Well, um, I don't know if I'll ever really want to stop doing one-on-ones, but I'll I'll do it like I'll make sure that I have plenty of time to spend with my daughter. I have a three-year-old, and I and I work harder now than I ever have, and uh, which means more hours, which means less time for my family. So I'd like to get to that point where I'm a bit more on cruise control with. Um, putting stuff out there and being able to survive off of it or, you know, a family of three survive off of it and not have to um, do the f over 50 hours a week of working. Yes. I can imagine it's a lot. I know. I, I understand that. I do. I do. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's um, yeah. But I suppose uh, the, 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 the opportunities uh, and the what you've got ahead of you uh one has to wait to see that play out but i'm sure that's going to be very exciting i'm sure there's a lot more to come a lot more to come with what you're doing yeah. um and m maybe the work's going to become even more important as as we go through this shift and we start seeing more aliens amongst us you know <laughs> and their their ships coming in and their them walking amongst us i think they're i think the channelers and the intuitives and the you know the people who've been working in this realm and working on themselves to the point where they can handle being face to face with an et or communicate telepathically with an et i think that will come into a higher demand well also okay there's that and um, what about just the shift in in what we're going through collectively um yeah. yeah that's part of it too i think i think that the knowing that there's more out there than just us on this rock in this you know bottom like this part of the milky way and the milky way is so huge and we're like off almost at the edge of it and it's like there's so much more out there that it, that's bound to expand people's consciousness. That's bound to make people think differently about themselves and the world and the universe. And, um, 
And so I think that there are certain things that happen um, that do kind of nudge us forward as individuals, of course, and as a collective to becoming more of our true selves, more of our whole selves, which really the truth is we are the universe and the universe is inside of us. And, and these beings, I think, will help us realize that in a way that no human being ever could. Yeah, but if if consciousness in on the ground a picture, if, if there wants to be some sort of shift to a different type of experience than what we're all having right now, and if if that energy is is actually is a, is there moving things forward right now because it, it whatever that whatever's behind that energy wants things to change right and maybe collectively it's yeah. all of us right maybe yeah, yeah. God the universe whatever you want to call it right. Um, then it's not going to be such an easy transition, is it? I mean, if... if um... it, it depends, and it really depends on who you listen to, too. Like, what what version of that story you're getting. Like, and I was listening to someone else's podcast recently where they were saying, I talked to this person, and they said it's going to be two and a half years from now. And I talked to this person, and they said it's going to be decades. And then I talked to this person, and they said there's going to be a solar flash. And this person said that it's going to be volcanoes. And it's like... Those are all timelines. And that's that's the thing too, for people who are disillusioned by how many different stories there are out there about reality, uh, is it a simulation? Is it all being run by the cabal? Is it this, is it that? Um, what's really going on behind the scenes with this thing? Is this person a clone? You know, like so many stories from so many channelers. And I just sit back and think, choose what, you know, do, you think there's one, you think there's one reality. You think that source has limited itself to there only being one version of earth, one version of humanity, one version of the collective that we're a part of one, one story. No, it's, it's, all of them and you and we are choosing and all of these different scenarios that are being thrown at us about what's going to happen they're just choices that people and you might say that one rings true for me that one resonates and that i, I that's the one we're all going to experience and really believe that and then experience it because everything's a self-fulfilling prophecy and bashar who i know you love and i love bashar he says about conspiracy theories, he says, you can make any conspiracy theory true. <laughs> if you focus on it, that will become your reality. So that's what people need to realize is that no matter what you're seeing out there, it doesn't matter who the source is, no matter where it's coming from, you get to choose whether that's your reality or not. Because really in reality, my reality right now is me talking to you, everything I see, everything I hear, smell, can touch, taste, but that's it. So what's going on in China right now is not really a part of my reality other than the, the fact, like I said earlier, we're all connected. So if it's happening someone in China, it is really happening to me, but I have to go to some source to find out what that is, or I can go meditate, go sit under a tree and feel oneness with all and feel unity consciousness, or I can go get someone else's version of what that is, what's really happening, you know, which I don't, I don't necessarily think that's what channeling was meant to be. I think it was meant to give us teachings, perspectives, here's another way of maybe approaching this, not here's what's really going on in those underground bunkers. You know, it's like, I, I don't think that's what it was meant for. Yeah. I mean, I, I rarely see channelers doing that. It's rare, but yes, it does happen, but it, but it is rare. Yeah. Because you're focused on the good ones. Like I've seen who you interview. <laughs> you're focused on the good channelers, but I see the YouTube videos and I see the titles of them and I'm like, not interested i tell you to i'm like i'm not interested in you suggesting these videos <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 no no the, when you mentioned about the event the, the the i know the event you're talking about the um 
um, electromagnetic pulse event that's supposed to happen in a couple of years. I see, uh-huh. I see a, f- a few people pushing that right now. And I'm like, mm-hmm. God, how can you sit there and, and just lie? <laughs> but um, well, the other thing is, too, is like everybody believe. like I said, it resonates with some people. But the thing is, if the message is you don't have to do anything, you're done, you're complete, no more evolving required for you, then you really need to ask yourself, am I really that perfect? Like. Do I really have no issues? I have no negative thoughts. I have no problems in my relationships. I've, I'm just ready to ascend because I don't feel that way. <laughs> no, I'm a work in progress, and I, and I, my wife will tell you that. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we're all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're. That's right. We wouldn't be here otherwise, would we? We yeah, wouldn't be no. here otherwise. Sorry yeah. to be ascended. No, yeah. this is the the one guy that was saying that stuff about the um, the event was, um, you know, just the people's reaction to you know the the fear coming from people about you know how am I going to have enough food? You know what about how, how, you all know, the my, food shortage stuff? Yeah, you know yeah, my yeah. my husband's you know doesn't want to prep, but I do, and yeah, should I yeah. should I leave him? <laughs> 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 and I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, just like, well, my God, we just where's your common sense gone? Where where's your discernment gone in some in some ways? Um, but like I said, every Everything's on a journey, um, most definitely. So uh, just remind us of the website one more time. It is. Okay. It's, it's danielscranton.com is my website. So Daniel, you know how to spell that. Most people do. Scranton, just like the city in Pennsylvania. And then um, .com forward slash mega, M-E-G-A. That's how you get to the course. The coupon code, which we haven't talked about yet for your people who are watching this is Kevin. So K-E-V-I-N is what you type in at checkout. So you want to go to the cart and you'll see the little box where it says you have a coupon code, stick it in here, click apply. And that takes 20% off the price for Kevin's viewers. Okay. Wonderful. We have, we'll make sure that we put that in the description below as well. Um, I know we said we was going to do some channeling and we've not for the second time um, done that. Um, now I have some kid coming to mow my lawn in five minutes. Yeah, so. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> it, it, everything's meant to be the way it is. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So, because um, I know that we're a, a bit late starting as well, which is my fault. So I just want to say, Daniel, just um, thank you very much for coming on. And um, yeah, I hope to meet you in different circumstances for myself as well uh, one day uh, when we do more content together. And I know I will um, be in a different place. We're doing different things. Uh, But it's very interesting to hear what you've got to say. And I do appreciate this coming back on, just giving us a bit bit of an update and uh, just to help you with the the channeling course as well. So thank you. Evan. Yeah, it's it's always a pleasure.